Welcome to a Friday Reads, we talk about what I read, what I'm reading, what I hope to get to next, and it's fall, guys. Like, the trees, the colors are popping. Oh, it's a colorful year. I'm actually, after this, gonna go outside and, like, blow some of my leaves. They're finally starting to collect some of them, and it's getting a little, a lot out there, because not only are the leaves changing, they're starting to fall, but it's so pretty. The reds are red, the oranges are orange, like, it's just, even my oak trees aren't brown. It's stunning. Ah, and it's a really nice, just like, I don't know, high 50s, low 60 degree day. Um, so I'm just like not hot, not too cold. It's sunny. What could you ask for? I could ask for a lot of little things. Like, I don't know, my body is still in pain, but I'm, I'm reveling, I'm reveling. But we're here to talk about books. And like, I'm having pretty much my best reading month. Not in terms of like number of books, because I'm like really busy with work, but like when I'm reading, I'm like in it and it's engaging and I'm loving it and I want to talk about it. So good. Um, and I have books that I hauled from our trip last weekend and the trip was really fun. So let's first talk about what I finished since last time. I finished Juniper and Thorn and I loved it. Like, <laughs> I loved this book. Apparently, I think part of, and I'm just taking out my bookmark, the bad reviews for this or rough reviews are people thought this was not going to be as dark as it was. And I don't know if it's because of reviews or like, I mean, I don't look at this cover and think happy go lucky good time. <laughs> like this looks terrifying to me. But I knew regardless somehow going in that this was really dark and it delivered. Oh, it was so dark and cathartic. It's a dark cathartic read. So it doesn't mean don't go look at trigger warnings or content warnings for you as a person. But it does mean that I, I, I just felt very cathartic by the end of it. And I'm really excited to try out more Ava Reed. That was my large takeaway from this. It's like her writing style and my brain were, we were doing good things. Um, I loved physically reading it. I loved listening to it. I loved how each character came alive and their interactions. Um, and I loved how lush the descriptions were. Like the descriptions just really brought everything to life for me. How she describes mo mo movement in general, just movement in scenes how she describes how touch works between characters and also just intimate bonds and connections, whether familial, platonic, romantic. I really liked this. Um, but again, yeah, it is, it's dark. And like, I think what I also liked about this is I wasn't like surprised by any of the reveals in this story. And I don't know if you're necessarily supposed to be or not, like I'm not, I don't know. But pretty early on, you get the sense that our main character knows stuff but doesn't know stuff like is hiding from her truth because it's dark and unsettling and i really loved that and i loved unpacking it uh and like yeah i just i had a really good time it was just a uh, another world 20th century inspired fantasy like early 20th century and it also has the themes of like industry coming in and magic going out and i just had such a good time and it was short it didn't overstay its welcome i listened to it while going on many walks through the fall foliage and I am so glad I waited to read this in fall. Sometimes you make plans and it works. Yay. And I remembered I got this from the half price bookstore in this condition for like $8. Like goodness. Because um, it was always for sale at the Brookline Booksmith, but I didn't like how the dusk jackets were folded. They were always off center and I'm that type of book purchaser for some reason. Um, I am still reading The Franchi Penny Hotel. I only have two stories left and one's really short and I did just read this week, Turning Back, and I did really like Turning Back. Oh, that was interesting. Because I don't know if it was really a horror, but also it was like the type of horror that I like. It's like it was unsettling, maybe psychological. Um, we have this woman who works the night shift and one day runs into a naked old man and he describes that he turns into a snake once in a while. And also on like the B plot, her brother works for a gang. And we just learn about this guy's story. We also have, you know, ties to Vietnam because these are Vietnamese immigrants that came over. Um, and I just, I, it's that type of story where I just really enjoy what Violet Cooper Smith is playing with. <laughs> um, so that one was really fun to me. And it did have like tense moments at the end. I just don't know if I'd call it like scary or really unsettling all the way through, but I really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, my last two, I've got one finger and then the one after that is like Descending Dragon. Maybe I could finish it today. I have no clue. I just wanted to get this filmed before I go put on like athletic wear to go do yard work and physical therapy stuff, you know? Um, but this has been a fun short story read, which is good because I have a book haul and I have another short story collection to put on the TBR. So I am happy about that. 
And now my current read, and this has been like my only read all week and I've been really liking it. And this is a book I bought in Milwaukee. So I'm really happy it's working for me. Um, and this is The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval. I know I said I was gonna read The Good House last week. I'm still going to, but then I forgot I was buddy reading this with a friend. Um, so Jocelyn and I are buddy reading this right now and I'm gonna finish soon. Like I'm, I'm almost done. And so Halloween week, I'll be reading The Good House. Isn't that fun? This is Victor Laval. I have read two things by him and I've loved both. I still own both, which is a big thing for me, The Changeling and Lone Woman. And so this is an older work, I think 2012, which apparently is old now, even though that's after I graduated from high school. But <laughs> Victor Laval has a really fun, I don't know, horror to dark fantasy style. And I just really like his prose work, like how he writes works with brain, right? And that's been like the theme of the month, right? And this was no different and it's continuing to be great. It's, oh, yeah. And he does this thing in all of his books where I think I know what genre I'm reading. And I'm still always reading that genre, but he paces things in a way that that's where the surprise is. It's not the content for me, it's where he puts things. So like um, The Changeling, for example, starts off as one type of horror, but then pivots into a different type of maybe dark fantasy. And then Lone Woman, it does reveal what you expect as the reader to reveal, but way earlier. And you're like, oh, so I guess the falling action is dealing with this. And here it has three volumes and like halfway through the book, things are ramping up. And I'm like, oh, but there's half the book left. So obviously this isn't gonna work out. And so I'm like, now what are we doing? <laughs> but I really like it. So this is about Pepper, primarily. Um, Pepper um, gets into a scuffle with some cops who are not identified as cops, but that's neither here nor there. And they, instead of charging him that night, put him in this mental institute. And he doesn't belong there, but through circumstances, that's where he ends up. And within this mental institute, is the devil in silver. And I don't want to say that much more because it's just really fun to read and discover and be like, oh, I thought it was going to be this type of story and now it's this type of story. But I will say, non-spoilery, ah, all these characters just really pop off the page. And it's a really great discussion about where we are failing patients who do need mental health aid. Um, it's, it's, it, it's one of those horrors that deals with the horror of this institution. Um, both, you know, how it's falling short, but also like kind of, you know, maybe dramatizing it a little bit. And then also a horror of like, there is this thing in this institute and it's creepy. And so the entertainment value is just really there for me. I'm in the last part, I think, and I am excited um, to finish it out, to see where we go. But this has been one of my sources of joy this week, even though it's really frustrating and dark. And there's a lot of like, why are things like this? This is not fair, not how it should be. There are moments that hit me that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> it's great. I'm so glad that I just happened to see this at a bookstore. It was $8 as well. So two for two for the used $8 books. All I'm saying. And also apparently dark fiction, still the stuff that's working for me lately. What, am, what are we gonna say about that? I, I don't know. Um, so like I said, up next, The Good House for sure. And that's probably gonna be, I think my last like intentionally spooky dark read because I think there's gonna be a bit more sci-fi in my life in November. I've been like tentatively thinking about November in the distance. And if I end up finishing The, the Devil in Silver and The Good House and I need another book, I might pick up perhaps the stars because I keep saying I'm gonna read that book and I want to read that book and I just haven't picked it up. So that'll be the goal. Um, in my defense, it's not one that's easy for me to just walk and listen to and sitting down to read is hard. That's why it's been taking me so long to read this <laughs> because I don't have an audiobook for it. But I'm getting there and steps are being made to improve my quality of life. And you know, it'll get better. I'll adjust to whatever the new normal is and I, you know, do the best I can, but I went to Pittsburgh last weekend and that was fun. We hung out with some friends who were also traveling to Pittsburgh. We had a really great hotel spot. Um, there was like a outdoor flea market just happened to be across the street from our hotel and like, it was fun. And like when we were deciding what to do, I was like, well, the only thing I would like to do is go to a bookstore. I like to go to bookstores in cities I visit and it makes it feel better to buy new books at an indie bookstore when I'm traveling. <laughs> Cause it's like, I'm supporting this thing that I want to exist. <laughs> And we went to this place called like the Alphabet City Culture Center and in it was called The Asylum, which um, been having a lot of asylum content lately between this and I watched an episode of The Penguin. It's just, 
it's been a thing. And I had two books on my list and I was able to find both of them, which is quite lucky because they didn't have like a huge science fiction fantasy section. And I'm really excited. So we've got Model Home by River Solomon. Uh, this is the author of The Deep and Sorrowland, which is my favorite. I love Sorrowland. I don't know what this is about. Presumably, it's going to be a speculative haunting house related adjacent book. And it's by River Solomon. I love River Solomons. I love how they play with gender. I like location based speculative stories. This is such a green cover, though. It is aggressively Kelly green, which happens to be Ryan's favorite color. But yeah, I just I wanted to support them. I have enjoyed or appreciated everything they have written. I think my least favorite is An Unkindness of Ghosts, but like that was still really good. And then I mean, part of me is like, man, I wish I had more reading time because I would totally try and, you know, like get this in really soon. But this is A Sunny Place for Shady People. This is uh, Mariana Enriquez's short story collection that just got released. Um, I think there's another translated short story collection by her, but I have not read it yet. Uh, this is, I believe, the same translator as Our Share of Night, and which is uh, Megan McDowell. And I love Our Share of Night. I am an Our Share of Night apologist because people just do not like part three of that book. But I love part three of that book. It is the slowest of slow burns, but I think it's so worth it. I love a slow burn horror. I think that's where I'm at. Like, I don't know if we talk about it like that, but I love a slow paced horror, especially when it pays off. Like, obviously, if it doesn't pay off. But yeah, this I've heard good things about. I love the cover. Like I'm obsessed. When I saw this cover, and if you haven't seen the Our Share of Night cover, this is that. And I'm like, yes, they must exist in my collection, please. So I got that. So these are my acquisitions. So two TBR books off, actually three. If by the end of the month I finish these three, and then two on, that doesn't seem too bad. Um, not that I'm one that you know, really cares. Eventually near the end of the year, I'll do a, a physical TBR look about to see how we're doing. We at least are still contained to the cart, which I appreciate. So yeah, that's how it's been going. Um, we've been watching Agatha all along, which I've been enjoying. We've been watching The Penguin, also really good. And yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna go outside, take care of the yard for a bit and enjoy the foliage because it's so pretty. And yes, I should be doing a whole bunch of other stuff, but I just wanna be outside while it's still not miserable to be outside. So I'm going to treat myself and lean into it. Um, let me know what you're reading, doing, watching this weekend. If you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here, leave a bison. I feel like there have to be bison. Buffalo bison. If there really is not a cow, I guess, but that just feels like a cop out. Otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.